Nick Calandra did an investigation to Mark Kern, an ex-Blizzard employee, exposing him for scamming people for thousands of dollars. Uh-oh, what's this? I think my favorite thing about Mark Kern is that his third failed game... Why can't you just call it something that's not weird? Is this Ember? Like, this is the close... It, like, I'm gonna call it Ember, okay? Because it's pretty close to Ember. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna call it that. Uh, has an option to buy Founders Packs for up to $15,000. So we'll open this dude up. Source, Founders Packs. It's right there. Yes, that's true. How is that a scam? I am not ready to discuss that yet. Because we're on page 1 of 10. All I'm doing right now is verifying that the information that he's providing is true. Like, let me go through everything else, and then we'll come back to it. Because, like, whenever I see stuff like this, I always think to myself, is this really true or is it not? So, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, it's me, though. All right, so let me make sure we've got this here. All right, so what did he say after this? We'll just go through his tweet thread, okay? Uh, remember all the digging I did back on the day before? I like this sort of work. It's getting more interesting the more you dig on obvious fraudsters. Uh, this is as far as his latest project got before his last update two years ago. The updates were just concept art. Nothing from the actual game because it doesn't exist. Okay, quite ethical, huh? Okay, so this is the last time that... Okay, well, I mean, this, like, where's this? Ember first playable Welcome achieved. Another video update for Ember, jetpacking and gliding. Okay. This is a huge update for us, as this is the first time you can pilot the Omniframe. Ba backers can download this now at my.ember. All right. Month, since fans first followed us over this frame. So you got you got these things, okay? Be a multiplayer version of the movement demo, followed by guns and weapons. I mean, you know, I was a big Armored Core 6 fan. I loved it a lot. So, like, I see this. This looks good. I mean, right? I mean, it's it's not... Like, obviously, it doesn't look as good as Armored Core 6. But, uh, you know, this is all right. But this is four years ago. Like, we're, we're, what happened for four years? Okay, so let's see. But he's still taking money on it. Let's keep uh, going, shall we? They're still accepting money. It seems like there's about four people working on the project, and they're very focused on revamping the website due to increased attention. You might think that he's using all this Twitter outrage to find a way to get funding. This is March 2024. Okay. I, I also... I do think that this isn't true. I don't think that it's true that he's using the Twitter outrage to get money. I think Mark Kern just doesn't like it. I, I actually think it's that, so I think he just doesn't like it. And obviously he's going to get more money with it, but I think that if you want to go through and... Like, at that point, every single person who has an opinion on everything on the internet usually always has something that they're monetarily connected to. So, like, if you view it as in... Every single time that somebody complains about something, they're actually doing it for an ulterior motive. I think that you could apply that to anyone, right? So we'd have to see more evidence that, like, this is explicitly what the reason is, right? Because I think that just saying, like, oh, well, he's only doing this to, like, bat make his game more popular. Like, you could say that. Like, what is this guy doing? Are you only doing this to make your, like, whatever this is more popular or whatever this is? Probably not. You just have an opinion on this. And so there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not, not everybody is doing things that you disagree with just for money. Sometimes people just disagree with you and, and you know, they're stupid or you're stupid, right? Uh, that's it. They post updates every day on this forum thread if you'd like to see how much progress is being made on the game. Okay, let's see it. Well, this is March 30th and it, today's May 7th or April 7th, so... Yeah, it seems like they're not really... Oh, 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 I see the date now. All right, yeah, I get it. Okay, that's fine. But, you know, it's it's pretty regular, right? It seems like it's being updated regularly. I'm still not seeing how it's a scam. Yeah, we, we've got some more of it. How about FOMO? Putting skins on sale for a game that doesn't exist, only for a limited time so that suckers give them money for things that have zero value. Been selling skins for a game that doesn't exist since 2017. Uh, impressive. Yeah, I think this is stupid, too. Uh, I think that this is stupid whenever Ashes of Creation does it. It's stupid whenever 
uh, you know, PoE did this even, right? Like, I th I'm pretty sure they sold skins and, you know, different types of packages before the game actually went into, like, a full release in, like, what was it, 2014 or something like that? So, like, PoE did it. Uh, I mean, I think the big one, right, is, is Star Citizen uh, does that too. So, yeah, this is, it's, it's, it's not a good thing, but it is a pretty common practice that, you know, this type of thing has. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it gets better. They also had a monthly subscription service. Not only are they making a game, but he's also making a novel, a tabletop RPG. Notice how he doesn't advertise any of this on Twitter, because even his audience would call it out. Well, so if he doesn't advertise any of it on Twitter, then why is he using it as a reason? So he's using Twitter outrage as a way to get funding on the thing that you admit that he's not advertising on Twitter? I mean, I'd... Okay, but let's go ahead and move on, because uh, even his audience would call it out. Makes sense, yeah. Uh, USD helped fund the development. $7 uh, monthly Patreon. I mean, everybody, like, this is a very common practice. And I understand if Nick isn't happy about this practice... And I think he has every right to be upset about this practice because oftentimes it can be used in a predatory way where people get taken advantage of. I think that he's right. Uh, however, I don't want to single out Mark Kern and say that like he's somehow uniquely bad in this situation because there's a lot of games that I don't know if he's covered these games or not, but there's a lot of games that do this. There are many games that have Patreons that people subscribe to on a monthly basis whenever the game isn't out. Like, this is... I, I, I don't know, guys. I feel like this is really normal. Just saying in development a long time is, is not always a scam. You're right, but sometimes it is. The game's been in development since 2017. He pr promised backers a playable demo in 2020 and never delivered. And all they've shown in seven years of development is concept art. Well, that's not true. Uh, he did show one gameplay reveal here. Uh, assuming that, like, maybe this is a vertical slice, maybe this is... And what that means is it's, like, it's not really a demo, it's just, like, a very small version of the game that makes it look like it's a full game. But, uh, yeah, maybe that's the case. But, yeah, I mean, I, I can see why people would be frustrated. Uh, I'm not, I, I'm not ready to call this out as a scam, though. Uh, I just, I don't think it's a scam yet. Let's go back further where he raised another million dollars for an Oculus Rift project that got a reveal trailer and then died. Okay, so this was nine years ago, and the project died. Okay, um... That's cute. So anyway, yeah, uh, did he raise, so he raised the money. Most projects don't like out, still not a scam. Yeah, and also, like, did he raise, the, you, you're using the word raising the money. I think this is very different. Did he raise the money through investors, or did he raise the money through the public? Because if investors invested in something that was bad for whatever reason, like, they go into that knowing that. Like, anybody who's in venture capital knows this. A lot of games fail. Like, I mean, fuck. Blizzard basically canceled Overwatch 2, they canceled StarCraft Ghost, and they canceled, uh, Project Titan. And the survival game. So, yeah, I mean, I don't really- th I, I mean, you know, Mark Kern comes from Blizzard, so the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> so, that's just the way it is. What's the rest of it? I've done some digging. I've found something cool later today to continue. Uh, here's his motive for all of this, in case you were wondering. If you want to help me change the gaming industry, like my most recent expose on the uh, community manager and their secret discussion groups, please subscribe. It's about money because he wants to do this. Um, I, I'm not really sure if I... Like, everybody... So... Like, this is true, but it's also true, like, it's, this is like, it, it's true and it's not true, right? So, the truth is that Mark Kern has a brand of politics that is incredibly unprofitable. So, if he was doing all of this for the money, wouldn't it logically make more sense that he would just adopt mainstream politics and make more money? 
No, I don't think that people that have bad opinions that nobody agrees with, I don't think this is necessarily the fact that they're doing it all for the money, but also everybody needs money. Like, I, I think that anybody could easily say that, like, I'm doing it all for the money because videos like this get posted on YouTube and then I get ad revenue from them. But everybody's doing that. It's the same as Sweet Baby is doing it for the money because they're getting paid by the companies that are paying them. Everybody's doing it for the money because everybody needs money. I don't think that there are any, like, in general, like, yeah, there are people that are more and less, you know, I'd say, like, ethical with doing things like this, maybe a little bit. But for the most part, I think that it's all pretty much the same. What's wrong with that? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And this guy, again, I mean, he's got a link directly. I mean, here's the thing, right? You go over, you look at this, you look at this, keep your shit from falling apart. It's a new game. So he's got a game right here advertised on his page. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with doing this. But the truth is that based off of the same foundational argument that he uses against Mark Kern, it can be applied to him. So should we not take his argument seriously because he falls into the same category by his own reasoning? I'm sorry, but I just don't think this is very good argumentation. So where's the rest of it? Had fun digging. All right, his followers are tagging this in him to tell on me. You can't uh, make up how stupid it is. It's comical at this point. I have him blocked. Uh, right now, let's see if he wants to explain himself where the money's going. He won't. Uh, well, Grums, who's the person who's going to save the game industry from all these awful people of ethics, mishandling the money, accept subscription payments and sell skins for a game that doesn't exist in any form, how long are you going to string people along, uh, who keeps tagging people or his followers to dogpile and harass, uh, and who he knows to run game studios for, ever talk about how he's more than happy to milk gullible money, people for their money. Um, I don't really like this idea that if you are tagging people for and, and criticizing their actions, that you are dogpiling and harassing them. Because again, if you say that, then aren't you dogpiling and harassing Mark Kern right here? Uh, I, I don't like that logic because the implication is that you can't criticize people on the internet, which is ridiculous. Yeah, it, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, no, you absolutely can. And if he doesn't like something that a person posts on a public platform, then he can express that dislike on a public platform. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, I, I don't understand this. This feels very petty. Yeah. His lack of game updates are very concerning. Well, let's see. Are there, how much... Holy fuck. How, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I think that I've already pretty much... Like, I, I just read, read through everything, except for I did not read this part. Uh, so, this is, what I, this is what I think. I think that Nick brings up a very strong point, and I think that Mark Kern does need to answer these questions. And I think that making video games nowadays that seem to turn into vaporware without regular updates, because, for example, um, Ashes of Creation has had regular playable updates regularly. Star Citizen has had a playable uh, state of the game for quite a while. Now, also, Star Citizen sells things for way more money as well. And they're making another game, too. So I do think that Mark Kern does need to take some accountability for what seems to be a, va a vaporware project that people are putting money into randomly. So anyway, I think this is very fair, what he's saying here about the game. And like, so there's two separate things. Grums, any like 50 complaining about my hot girls and games? I'm going to be 50 complaining about hot girls and games. I absolutely will. I'll be doing it when I'm 60, too. And 70, hopefully, right? 80, hopefully. 90, hopefully, right? Yeah, let's be honest. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. What the hell? I think that this is completely valid, what Nick is saying. And I, I think that it's totally fair to criticize Mark for this, especially with all of the receipts and all the money that was raised, the fact that the game hasn't gone anywhere, etc. This is very, very fair. And I don't think that this is necessarily evidence of him, like, 100% being a scammer. But I do think that Mark Kern should come out and, like, address each one of these points genuinely. Because it is legit. Yeah, he might not be a scammer, but he's completely full of shit. Yeah, I, I do think that this is, this is a huge problem. And Mark Kern should take accountability for the things that Nick is bringing up. I also don't think that this has anything to do with what Mark Kern is saying about the video game industry. And I think the truth is that Nick doesn't like what Mark Kern is saying about the video game industry. And so Nick is using this as a tool to, like, illegitimize Mark Kern's 
like statements about the games industry, but I don't think he really cares about this game at all, necessarily. I think he's just simply using it as a tool to make him look bad, which, again, is totally fine because it's all in the public. But at the same time, uh, you know, I think it's important to understand, like, where this is coming from. Well, bigger problem in the games industry, fake woke scandals uh, or scammers grifting idiots who want to be anti-woke. What's a bigger problem? Um, I don't know. It depends on who you ask. I mean, to me, I think that the scams are really bad. Is there anything here, by the way, is there anything here that makes me... Can I use the words scam to say that that's Mark Kern? Do, am I going to say Mark Kern's game is a scam? I'm not sure that I've seen enough evidence to say that it is a scam. But it's pretty close. I will definitely say that. It, it, if this is Chronicles of Illyria, what would we say? Well, we'd say it's a scam. Absolutely. That's the thing. And also, Chronicles of Illyria was a lot worse. Like, they, I don't even know if they had a playable demo at all. And that's the thing, is that even with Chronicles of Illyria or any of those other games, I think that a lot of times, a lot of people, like, Sometimes games don't happen because people fuck things up. Like, it's not like it was intentionally a scam. And I do think this is important. If you're doing something and it doesn't work out, it doesn't retroactively become a scam. Sometimes it just becomes a failure. And a failure is not necessarily a scam. But I can see why people say it is. Because from their perspective, if they give you money and then they don't get what they want with their money, then they think they get scammed. Here's the fucking, uh, here's the lesson from this. Don't give random middle-aged men on the internet your money hoping that they might make a good video game. The Kickstarter, like the way that Kickstarters work and everything, like it is buyer beware. You should expect that every single time that you give somebody money like this, that you are lighting that money on fire, and maybe some point in the future, it will come along and help you. You should recognize the risk and gamble. Yes, yes, you should absolutely do that. Base never give Kickstarter video games money. I think that you don't need to never give them because like I've, you know, I promoted games like, for example, on Pixel Pitch. And I've said, like, this is a great game if you want to support it. I don't think there's anything wrong with supporting game developers that are trying to make their game on Kickstarter. But I think that you need to go into it with the expectation that sometimes those games don't succeed and sometimes they don't work out. And that's what happens. It happens even with AAA studios. Uh, what game has Mark Kern made this 20 years after Blizzard? I hear his name a lot. It's always ex-Blizzard Mark Kern. What's he done since then? I have no idea. Uh, killed by shitty management decisions. Yeah. If Mark Curran is bad at making games, I have no fucking clue. I don't know. I'd love you to open up a podcast, something uh, where you just talk about stuff category for us to go through. Oh, yeah. It's risky, but supporting indie funding is how we combat low-quality AAA. Yeah, and that's a good thing. I don't disagree with the vast majority of what Nick is saying or pointing out, but I'm going to love you some nuance here and tell my own anecdote. Nick, I don't, uh, is a gotcha. He proclaims sheer existence of the proof is something to be bad as a scam. Expensive founders packs can exist uh, without the project itself being a scam. And I recognize that. Yeah, like a lot of games have really expensive founders packs like PoE, Lost Ark. Uh, well, I mean, Lost Ark doesn't really have expensive founders packs. You know, they uh, just have expensive gameplay and, uh, you know, Ashes of Creation, Star Citizen. Right. This is very common. Uh, so yeah, Kern is so this guy thinks that Mark Kern is clearly scamming people. This game hasn't moved forward beyond the concept art, and we're at like the seven-year part. It's like Mark Kern saw Star Citizen and copied their homework. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think that there's anything here that he's saying that's like really wrong. And again, like, it's not about whether like. So this is the problem is that like whenever you put something out into the public, remember what I said before about like how nobody cares about artists' opinions? This is an example of that, but it's a different kind of example of that. So whenever you put something out into the public and then people perceive it in a certain way, whenever your product is perception and people perceive it in a different way, you are not selling the product in the right way. So, in a way, if everybody thinks it's a scam, it's a fucking scam. Like, whenever the people that are giving you money, or pot potentially giving you money, thinks it's a scam, then, you know, you're kind of scamming. 
They also just said they completely rebooted and restarted the project, so it's going to take a while before we see any updates. Yeah, but like, wouldn't any company that's trying to scam say that? I mean, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to be, like, I generally like, I kind of like Mark Kern, and so like, I don't want to shit on Mark Kern. He's one of the reasons, like, why we got classic, right? I mean, he did that whole thing with like all the the petitions and took it to Mike Morheim. So I have a generally positive opinion about Mark Kern, but. I mean, yeah, this looks really bad, man. It does. It looks really, really bad. Especially from, like, all the things that he's been criticizing other developers for. I think that's totally fucking fair. And so, anyway, yeah. What is the end result of this? I think Nick brings up some very good points. I think that all of his argumentation that are attacking Mark Kern's credibility with what he was saying about, like, different studios being, like, uh, DEI and shit... I think all of that argumentation is paper thin and terrible, but I think that whenever he talks about the actual game itself and the problems that the game itself has, I think that yes, for a lot of people, this is considered a scam, but at the same time, you have to contextualize it with the fact that any Kickstarter is buyer beware, and there are a lot of Kickstarters that go this way. And I don't really think that's necessarily a scam, but with seven years, no playable demo, anything like that, I do think Mark Kern should take some degree of accountability for this. Because it it's really bad. It's bad. That's it. It's bad. No demo is bad. Yeah, it's bad. This opportunity to be a spokesperson of justice uh, while not taking accountability for your failed money collection ventures? Yeah, that's. I think that he does have to take accountability for this 100%. It's not even a question.